Are we working? All right. Hey, it's Friday afternoon. You had a snow day on Wednesday. That means you get me on video. Woo! So, hit me over the Simpsons. I'd be open with, hey, everybody. It's me, Dr. Wakefield. If you don't know Dr. Nick Rivia, we have problems. And since I take requests, welcome to Moe's. You know who that's for. All right. So, where we left off was learning how to name an antimers. So, we, there's some rules we need to go through. I like to do this very systematically. So, we were going over the first rule, which is if the group with the lowest priority, if the group that is four, is pointed away from you, is on the dash, then one, two, three, four, we'll go, go one, two, three, clockwise is R, counterclockwise is X. Right, so I got some examples loaded up here. I suggest liberal use of pause because, oops, because I've got a bunch of examples uh, loaded up and ready to go here because that's how I roll. All right, so first example here, oxygen gets highest priority, so that's one. We have two carbons. We've got a carbon here and here. Uh, so those two carbons are tied, we walk out. Over here we have a hydrogen. Over here we have another carbon. So this gets the, so the ethyl, like I sorry, the propyl chain gets the next priority. So that's two, ooh, uh, that's not really a two. Uh, that second priority. And then the methyl group is third. And then our understood hydrogen, that again I don't have to draw in, that is four, right? So when the low part is pointing away from you, you go one, two, three, and back. You connect the dots. You connect the dots counterclockwise. This is X. All right. Go to our next example here. Again, pause. Think about it. Then watch me do it. Really super awesome. All right. So we come over here. Bromine is the highest priority. Biggest atomic number. Then chlorine. And again, we have carbon to carbon. So we've got a carbon here and a carbon here. That's a time. We walk out the next group. We have a hydrogen up here. We have a carbon here. So our ethyl chain wins. So ethyl is three. That puts this methyl group as four. All right, so we go one, two, three. We connect one, two, and three. We go clockwise. That is all. Super good. All right, next one here, again, bromine's one, nitrogen two, carbon is three, and then we have our understood hydrogen, that is four, so one, two, three, four, R. All right, coming down to this next one here, with the carboxylic acid. All right, now how do we differentiate these? We've got a carbon, a carbon, and a carbon, all right? Now, how do we differentiate these, differentiate these carbons? Well, this carbon right here, the carboxylic acid, is attached to an oxygen, where all these other ones, this is attached to a hydrogen, this is attached to another carbon. So the oxygen has higher priority, so the oxygen becomes, so the carboxylic acid becomes one. Then we have propyl versus methyl. Again, hydrogen versus, sorry, hydrogen versus carbon, right? So carbon wins, that's two. Then we've got, Great, so I'm sorry, do they get carbon and carbon tied. Next out, hydrogen and carbon. So carbon wins that too. Great. Then we have our understood hydrogen. And let them draw in. I don't know why I went from red to blue, but hey, festive, I guess. There's a festival. All right. So we go one, two, three, counterclockwise. And that is it. Then I come over here with one that's got a little bit more going on. Right? So we've got an oxygen, a carbon, and a carbon. Well, of course, the oxygen is going to get highest priority. So oxygen right here is one. Right? Now we've got carbon here and carbon here. This carbon is attached to two oxygens. This carbon is attached to one oxygen. So we've got two, one, two. We've got one here. So two oxygens takes priority over one oxygen. So the carboxylic acid is two. The alcohol is three. Then again, we have our understood hydrogen. 
right? So we connect the dots, which is four. So we connect the dots, one, two, three, four. That is R. It's clockwise, so it's R, right? Now I use hydrogen as my low priority group, but the low priority group Low priority group can be anything. Don't get hung up on the fact that it's typically hydrogen when I do examples. It can be methyl, it can be an alcohol if everything works out right. It doesn't really matter. The low priority group can be anything. You just go through your rules and assign the priorities. All right. So that is the first rule. If you've got, uh, if you have the low priority group pointing away from you, it's super straightforward. Is you just do the numbers one two three four connect the dots one two three. If you go clockwise, it's R. Counterclockwise is X. Now, when we draw these, they're not always drawn with the low priority group pointing towards you. So there are examples where the low priority group, sorry, they're not always drawn with the low priority group pointing away from you. They are sometimes drawn with the low priority group pointing toward you. When that's the case, you assign R and S as we did before, but you switch at the end. So basically, all the rules are made so that when you're looking at the molecule, the low priority group should be pointing away from you. That's how the rules are made. Now, if the low priority group is pointing at you, you're basically on the wrong side of the molecule. And you have to go, oh, I'm actually on the back side of the molecule. I need to switch what I assign. And I'll show you some examples of that. I can get back to my pencil. All right. Again, I've got examples queued up. I'm coming correct today. All right? So, then we can name, right? Oxygen 1, ethyl 2, methyl 3, understood hydrogen is 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. That is clockwise. And that is R. All right. Now, this guy and this guy, these are... These are many isomers. They're mirror images of each other. But if you just switch the groups, right? So here I switched OH forward to become OH back, and then hydrogen back to become hydrogen forward, right? So these guys are enantiomers. So we know even before we assign the stereochemistry that this needs to be S. Because if one enantiomer is R, the other enantiomer has to be S. But, but how did that happen? How can we assign that? So the priorities don't change, right? We've got oxygen still 1, ethyl still 2, methyl still 3. All right. We've got our understood hydrogen. Right, it's 4. All right. So the difference is, is in our first example, the hydrogen is back. In this example, the hydrogen is up. So what that does is when we connect the dots, when we go one, two, three, what we say is, all right, this looks R, but because the low priority group is pointing at me, it is S. So it looks R, looks R, is S. Because you have to switch your assignment when the low priority group points at you. Right, let's do another one here. All right, so let's assign our priorities like we've been doing. Bromine is one, chlorine is two, ethyl is three, methyl is four. Right, we got this bromine, high, highest atomic number, then chlorine, carbon, carbon, pi. Hydrogen on my methyl group here. Right, we've got an H put on here. We've got a carbon here, so hydrogen versus carbon carbon wins, so the ethyl is three. Right, so again, my low priority group is pointing at me. So again, we assign one, two, three, right? This is clockwise, so it looks R, but because the low priority group is pointing at me, this group is pointing at me, it is S. So again, looks R is S. And before you ask, you don't have to write this on the, on the test. 
This is just a little mnemonic to try to help you. Right, so when the low power degree points out, you just think, oh, it looks one way, but it is the other. All right, we'll come over here. This one down. All right, so again, priorities. Oxygen is one. Nitrogen is two. Two carbons again, but again, the methyl group ends on a hydrogen. This is bonded to the, the chain, the ring is bonded to another carbon. So this is three, methyl is four. All right, let me connect the dots, and apparently me, these all are. And again, it's clockwise, but the low priority group points at you, so it looks R, and this very center is S. All right, we got another one here. Uh, I'm going to switch this real quick because you know, I can do that. I'm a grown person if you want. Gosh. Okay, okay. so we're going to go bromine again, one. Carbon bonded to one, two, three carbons. Common carbon bonded to one. This carbon takes priority, so it's second. This is third. Right? And again, my hydrogen is pointing, my low priority group, in this case hydrogen, is pointing at me. So that makes four. So again, connect the dots. One, two, three. It's counterclockwise. It looks S, but since the low priority group is pointing at me, it is R. So it looks S, the low priority group points at me, so it is R. All right, we'll do one more here. So, let's see here, chlorine is one, isopropyl two, ethyl three. Again, my understood hydrogen pointing at me. So that makes four. One, two, three. It's counterclockwise, it looks S, but it is R. So when the low priority group's pointing at you, again, I keep turning to a bunch of chairs. Somebody suggests I get cardboard cutouts of you guys, which is just kind of creepy, like to take your pictures of like Spencer's and like, I need, I need cardboard cutouts. Just weird. It's like the first step of being a stalker. I don't want to go there. All right. Honestly, no. All right, so one, two, three, looks R, or looks S, it's kind of clockwise, is R. All right, so when the low priority group points at you, you do everything exactly the same as you did for the first examples, but in the end, you switch what you've got. You go, all right, it looks like it's one thing, but since the low priority group points at me, I know it's the other. All right, let's see here. So there's that rule. Nope. All right, so next up. Now, what if there is a situation where where the low priority group is in plane. It's not pointing at you, and it's not pointing away from you. Right? You just throw your hands up and go, oh my god, I can't do it. Help me, Jesus. Oh my god. Ah, that Tom Cruise huge witchcraft to put out the fire. No, no, there, there's rules. We can do this. Right? So when the low priority group points at you, or when the low priority group is in plane, you just have to redraw the molecule a different way. And you can figure out the, the uh, what's going on. So let's get over to my examples. All right. Example time. All right. So here we go. So, oh, I'm sorry. Bad, bad, stop. Okay, here we go. Let's assign our priorities. And bromine's one, chlorine's two, ethyl's three. Methyl's four. All right, so our low priority group, our methyl, is in plane. How can we do this? What you do is you redraw the molecule and you switch your low priority group, preferably, with the group that is back. So we're just going to redraw our molecule. All right, so I'm going to use blue here. I'm going to redraw our molecule. All right, so now here's our chlorine. Here's our methyl. Here's our bromine. All right, 
So when we did this, we switched two groups. Switched the lower priority group. For the back group. So for the for the group that is pointed away from you. Just switch them. When you do that, these two guys, when you switch two groups, you end up with an antimers. Right, so I've made the enantiomer. This compound here in blue is the enantiomer of the compound I started with. Right, now, this is really easy. The blue molecule is really easy to assign RS to. Right? So what, bromine 1, we already did this, 2, 3. Now my low priority group is back. This is stupid easy, right? Okay. So this is counterclockwise. So the blue molecule is S. Right? So the molecule you started with, the one you wanted to know the stereochemistry for, is the enantiomer of the blue molecule, which means that the blue molecule is S, the starting molecule is R. All right, let's knock out another one here. So again, we're going to assign priority. So highest priority is actually the fluorine. One, then the oxygen two, then the nitrogen's three. Right, do I have that right? Yes, I do. And the carbon is four. I'm really, really sure that I have to ask myself. There's no periodic table in wall. Nothing. They don't even know what science is in wall. Right? So we're going to redraw it again. Oh, except for one guy. There's one guy in our class who comes here. He knows what science is. But the rest of them, clueless. All right. So uh, we're going to redraw this. So you're going to want to switch your low priority group with whatever is back. All right? So we're going to have our fluorine. And H2. O H. Sorry, that, that purple group got a little squiffy there. Alright, assign priorities. One, two, three, four. Alright. In this case, this is R. I don't know why my R's look so like scripty in my kindergarten. Right? So this is R, which means the molecule that I started with is X. Because by switching the group, the low priority group with the group that was back, I've made the enantiomer of the molecule I started with. And I've just done that because in this case, the blue molecule, easy. Black molecule, hard. Okay? You can do this without, you can do the hard molecules, the ones where the low priority group is in plane, without redrawing the structure. But you have to be really good at like, kind of like mental Tetris and like turning the molecule in your head and getting the right perspective. It takes practice. My way is more systematic. You can just kind of like, I can't say it's my way. The way I learned when I was doing this, the way I'm teaching you, is more systematic and it's easier to, uh, to, to just see it. Pick up, then we do that. Sorry, I'm not bringing my A in today. All right, more example time. All right, again, we're going to assign priorities. One. Two, that's a two, I swear. Two, three, four. Again, group, low priority group in plane. All right, so then we're going to redraw it. You're going to end up with the enantiomer. All right, so we're going to switch group four, group one. CL. Alright, so we're going to go one, two, three, four. 
three and uh, four. One, two, three, four. Right? So that is S, which means over here, this must be R, because they're an answer to each other. Again, don't forget, I'm going to go kind of quick doing the examples. You can pause the master of your own universe. Right? So, again, priority iodine is one, oxygen is two, three, and four. All right. Now, if you try to redraw this ring, it's, it's going to be a mess. Right? It's going to be hard to draw it back. It's going to kind of look funny. I mean, you can do it. So let's, uh, let's go through and do that real quick, redrawing it. And I'll show you a trick. All right, so we can redraw this. All right, so keep the LH up. Right, it looks weird, but it works. Right, so we're going to have one, two, oops, I've got another group. Okay, we're going to two, three, that makes four. So that is R. But what we started with is the answer, so it is S. Another trick, so you don't have to kind of redraw stuff or redraw as much, but if you start out over here, right? You don't have to use this, it's just something that works. Or you can just draw a generic molecule that is four, three, in this case, two, oops, not two and I died, two and one. All right? All right, I mean, that is essentially, all. this is essentially that stereotype. Right, you don't need any of the stuff. Right, so now when I redraw, right, I end up with two, four, one, three. One, two, three. Looks R, that means this is X. So you don't have to redraw the whole molecule, you just have to switch the priorities around. Right? So when you have the low priority group not in plane, with, it, when the low priority group is in plane, you need to redraw the molecule, get the enantiomer, which you have set up to be easier to solve, and then solve it. All right, so let's start at the start here. We'll work our way through. Again, you can pause, try to figure these out yourself before I do them, right? So we've got oxygen and chlorine. So chlorine is high priority. And then we've got oxygen next. Carbon bonded to one carbon, carbon bonded to two, carbon bonded to two carbons wins, and then four. All right, low priority group is in the plane. So we have to redraw, right? We have to use the rule we just, we just went over. So, all right, blue 
molecules and you answer the black molecule. So sign priorities again. One, two, three. Oops, sorry. I'm going to carry away myself there. Right, connect the dots. Counterclockwise, this guy is S. So the one we started with is off. Next one's pretty straightforward. Our, our little priority group is away. So we just go one, two, three. That makes four. Connect one, two, and three. Connect the dots. Off. Next guy in here. See here, we got one, two, three, four. Right, same deal. Low priority group in plane. We need to redraw. Right, so we end up with BR chlorine up. There we go. One, two, three, and you make four. All right? Again, this guy looks R. It is R. This one is S. Because there are any cameras. Come down here. Bromine's one. Carbon and carbon were tied. Walk out one group. Carbon and chlorine. Chlorine takes priority over carbon. So then this whole chain becomes two, this chain is three, and our understood hydrogen, our low priority group, pointing at us is four. So we go one, two, three, looks S, but since the low priority group is pointing at us, it is R. Again, the straightforward one here. Right, we've got one, two, Three, low priority group away. This guy is up. Pretty straightforward. How much time do we got left? Uh, ooh, about halfway through. All right. So, some of these examples I've noticed what I've been doing is. I don't want you to think you always switch the the low priority group with the high priority group. Right? So again, when you have your priorities, one, two, three, and four, right? Have to switch. It's not that you don't switch with the first priority group, you switch with whatever's back. So when you do you get your redraw on. Right, redraw. We're gonna have what is back? Chlorine is back. Methyl group's back now. Bromine. Assign our priorities. One, two, three. Methyl is four. Counterclockwise. This one is S. The one that we wanted to know is up. So we should be able to do any kind of example that I give you using one of these three sets of rules. Right, so the priority group back just exactly as it is one, two, Three, assign priority, one, two, three, four, connect the dots, exactly as of how it looks. R. Low priority forward. Do everything that you did over here. Exact same, so very end. One, two, 
three, four. It looks R, but because the little priority group points at me, it is X. Right? And then low priority group in plane. Oops. Very, very good thing there. Low priority group in plane. Sorry guys. Second lecture, I get punchy in the day. Pretty rough, really. All right. One, two, three, four. Low priority group in plane, so. Low priority. In plane, redraw and switch. So, so switch the low priority group and whatever is back. So one, two, three. Gosh, sorry guys, I can't count. That's four. Apparently I can count, but I can't assign priority. Okay, let's take a lecture of the day, guys. It's, it's brutal. All right, two, three, there we go. This looks, this is R, but now we go back over what we started with. This, this is R, what we started with is X. So you draw the enantiomer of what you started with, assign that, because it's easy, and then go back to what you started with, and you know you have the opposite because they're enantiomers. All right. All right, so that's how you can basically assign chirality. Right. So a little aside here, uh, why do you care? Is I think the best reason that you care is uh, thalidomide. So thalidomide in the late 50s, early 60s, was an effective treatment, an effective treatment for morning sickness. So thalidomide is a racemic compound. It's a one-to-one -one mixture of R and S enantiomers, right? So racemic means a one-to-one -one mixture of enantiomers. We'll talk about that over here in a little bit, right? So you've got S thalidomide and R thalidomide, right? And then in the body, they become racemic. They become a one-to-one -one mixture. Well. All right, so thalidomide is a drug, super cool, right? This compound was found to cause horrible birth defects in uh, thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of European children. So, why? Well, the S enantiomer, the one where the nitrogen group is back, fits into the major groove of DNA, and that then inhibits the growth and inhibits the expression of growth factors, which cause uh, the development of limb buds and fetuses. So basically, what would happen is, is that this compound would go bind to the DNA of the developing fetus and then make it so it would not grow arms or grow very short, uh, I wouldn't say useless, but not very functional arms, right? The R enantiomer is sleep inducing and prevents or limits morning sickness, right? So, enantiomers have the same physical properties, right? They have the same melting point, the same boiling point, uh, the same polarity, but they interact differently with chiral things. So, um, so basically, think of your think of your hands. Your hands are chiral. I don't know if you can see me down in your little corner or not. Here are your hands. They are non-superimposable mirror images of each other, right? They cannot be, if you had a mirror plane beside your left hand, you get your right hand, right? But they can't overlap. You can't slide on top of each other, right? Which is no big deal, except for when you go to put on gloves, right? Chiral things are different 
when they interact with other chiral things, right? Your hands are probably the same color, right? If you were to cut them off, they weigh the same. They can do all the same stuff. If you're right-handed, your right hand's a little bit better at that stuff than your left, but you can do all the same stuff, right? But if you go to put on a left-handed glove on your right hand, it doesn't work. It doesn't fit right, because the gloves are chiral, right? There's one, there's a match, right? So these compounds, though they're the same, when they interact with DNA, which is chiral, the S enantiomer binds to DNA and the R enantiomer doesn't, right? Now the problem is, it's like they're saying, well, why not just make the R enantiomer and just give that, just have the R enantiomer, right? The problem is, is that under physiological pH, the S enantiomer and the R enantiomer interconvert. So there is, uh, so if you give only the R enantiomer, it becomes the S enantiomer in the body and goes and does that thing. Some random person just tried to come in here and they heard me talking to science and they ran. They're like, oh my god, oh my god, help. Right? So they ran away. So let's do with that person. Right? I would have talked to them if they came in. Whatever. Right? So, so being able different enantiomers have different properties. And that affects how our body uses those compounds and how uh, how drugs are made. So now when you make a drug, you have to make only one enantiomer or the other, prove that they can interconvert, and show that that enantiomer is not toxic. If you make a racemic mixture, if you make a mixture of compounds, you have to show that each enantiomer is either, each enantiomer is harmless. So if the S enantiomer of your compound that you want to make as a drug uh, cures cancer, you have to show that the R enantiomer either does absolutely nothing or is non-toxic or, or has the same activity. So it either has to be totally non-toxic and benign and nothing or have the same activity. You can't have a mixture of compounds going in doing two crazy different things. Right? So you can't, you know, stop morning sickness and cause birth effects. So here are some of the pictures of some of the, uh, the children. Uh, let's see if I can move my picture here. Uh, go ahead. Oops. Go ahead and do that. Sorry. Working on this here. Right, so you can see kids up here at the pool, they have very short arms. Right, so they all have, and this is all a result of S the little one. So you see one child has, one brother has arms, one doesn't, and again, it's just the, the thalidomide. Right, so, oops. I went through all this stuff with naming, I went on this little like tangent here, but I didn't actually get to name it. Right, so let me go back for a second. Right, so when it goes to naming, right, I talked about how you assign RNS, but I didn't title these slides with naming antigens. I really haven't shown you how to name an antigen. So let's get back over here. So let's talk about actually naming something. Right? We'll start simple. Uh, name that thing. There you go. All right. So there you go. Get our name on here. All right. So the example I used earlier in class today, Friday, or we've done it before, is if you were to name this without worrying about stereochemistry, this would be 2-butanol, right? Four carbons, butane is an alcohol, OL, all, alcohol is a carbon, two, right? Now, to denote the stereochemistry, all you have to do is assign a priority, figure out the stereo center, one, two, three, back hydrogen is four, Right, there's a green term one, two, three, four. So this is R. So all you have to do is in front of the name, say that it is R to be O. Right, so you name it just like you would name anything else. And then you just have to put if it's R or S at the beginning of the name. So again, we're going to name this one, two, three, four, five, six. Hexane, right? Hexane has a bromine on it, so it's bromo. Saw this on the test, it's not YL. For halide, you take off the IDE for like bromide, 
and you put an O, it was bromo hexane. Where's the bromine at? It's at carbon three. So if I number it this way, one, two, three, four, five, six, bromo hexane. And then you have to figure out, you have to assign priority. So bromine's one, carbon and carbon tied, carbon and carbon tied, carbon and hydrogen out here, carbon wins, two, three, Pentano and Dabawaki. That's going to give hydrogen its fourth priority. Somehow it kind of like merged, right? And then hydrogen is four, so one, two, three. That is S. So it is S. Usually put it in brackets, so I'm trying to parentheses. S, three gram of hexane. Other chiral things. So, 
So in a lab, the chiral thing that we use is what's called plane polarized light. Right? So light can be chiral. Light can have a handedness. All right? So, so my next slide is here. Ah. All right. So, so you take, um, and you take, uh, let me, let me a pretty brutal picture. I'm not exactly, uh, again, I did not get up the arts for pearl. Okay. This is going to look like a drunk kindergartner, but, you know, deal. All right, you got yourself your light bulb here. It's got a light source. And you get light coming off. Right, electromagnetic energy, HV light. Right? And that light, if we were to look, if it was to be pointed right at us, right, you would see basically light on all these, on every plane, a wave on every plane coming in, right? So what we do is we put a polarimeter, or uh, a, 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 polarimeter a, a filter that polarizes the light. And what it does is it's set up so that the light that comes out is now what's called plain polarized. Light. All right. So now what this means is all this light that was on other waves, so all the light that was on this on these planes didn't make it through. So now if we were to look right at this plane of light, right at this wave of light that we have coming at us, we've got one, we've got waves on one plane. Right. So this light is plane polarized. Right? So what that does, basically now, all these other waves, all these other uh, waves of light on different planes are gone, and you have light that is on a single plane. Plane polarized light is chiral. So plane polarized light is chiral, in that when it reacts with a solution of chiral molecules, it treats those different chiral molecules differently. So, it's a kind of plane polarized light. Oops. Right? Effectively, we make the light chiral. Now we've got some, now when it passes through a solution of chiral molecules, the plane polarized light is going to be rotated. Right? So, back to my awesome drawing here. We're going to have. A solution of chiral molecules. Right, so I'm going to just draw O H. Right, our little, our little two deep null example here. Right, and that plane polarized light is going to go through that solution. And it's going to bend. So it, the, the wave pat, it goes through the solution, goes through the solution, and gets bent when it goes through the solution. Right? So now if you have the other enantiomer of the same compound, make my solution bigger so you can actually see. If I have the other enantiomer, right? And I pass my plane polarized light through. Right, so plane polarized light. That light, I, I, I totally lost my little wavy uh, uh, light uh, little dude there. There we go. You're going to, the light gets bent in the other direction. So one of the antimer bends the light in one direction. The other enantiomer bends the light in the other, right? So 
in the lab, that's one kind of quick way that you can determine if you have uh, a, a compound, if you separated an antimerase, let's say. All right, so chiral compounds are said to be optically active. That means that when they interact with light, there is an effect. They do something to light. They make plain polarized light bend. So they're optically active. Right? A chiral compounds, compounds that don't have a stereocenter or are just not chiral, they don't rotate plain polarized light. Therefore, they're optically inactive. Right? There's a designation of compounds either being plus or minus. Right? So basically what that saying is, is I don't even know exactly what's what, but you're gonna you're gonna bear with me here. Right? So let's say, for example, that this solution, that bending the light down is in the minus direction, and bending the light up is in the plus direction. Right? So basically, in front of names, sometimes you'll see plus or minus. That just tells you what direction they bend plain polarized light. Plus and minus. Plus or minus has nothing to do with R and X. You can have two molecules, right? For example, right, we could say alcohol up is plus and R. Alcohol back is minus an X, right? We could go then alcohol, sorry, bromine up, and that could be minus an R, bromine back, I think that's R, right? I got lucky, right? Bromine back could be plus an X. So, plus minus tells you zero, absolutely nothing about R and S. It is just reporting the phenomenon the, of the light being bent. That's the only thing it's doing. It tells you nothing if the molecule is R or S. Okay. So, compounds are not always a single isomer. They are sometimes mixtures of isomers. Right? A mixture, one-to-one -one mixtures of enantiomers are called racemic mixtures or racemates. So, okay. all right. So, if we have, uh, we have my big flask here, big beaker, right? And we have alcohol, alcohol. Uh oh, all right. We have a one-to-one -one mixture of, of enantiomers. So we've got two R's and two S's. This mixture is racemic, right? You can have mixtures ever in between. You can have pure mixtures, or pure solutions, or pure compounds, okay, where you have all of one enantiomer or all of another. Okay, so these are enantiomeric, these are called enantiomerically pure. Right? You have all of R or all of S in your flats. Right? Racemic is a one-to-one -one mixture. That's a special mixture. It's one of one answer, one of the other. You can have every ratio in between, right? You can have, yeah, I'm just gonna do this simply. You can have a, a three-to-one mixture. 
Or you can have everywhere in between. I think there might be some homework problems on calculating maybe an asymmetric excess or an asymmetric purity from alpha D's. Oh, oh, it's set time. Oh, it's over. Almost. I like talking. All right. So there's some problems where you have to calculate an asymmetric excess. I'm not going to go over how to do that. Look at your book and figure out how to do that. It's something good practice, but it's not something we do a whole lot. The way that we do it in the uh, way we do it in the way we teach in organic isn't the way we actually do it a lot of times. So if there's never like one problem we have to do that with. All right. So so racemic mixture one to one. So racemic racemic comes from the French word for grapes. So the way that racemic that uh, that Basically, chirality and racemates were discovered was that um, there's a, a compound called tartaric acid, uh, and it crystallizes. Each enantiomer of that compound crystallizes, and the crystals themselves are enantiomers. So I forget the guy's name. This is terrible. I should give him more love. Uh, basically, separated the crystals by hand into one set of enantiomers, one enantiomer of the crystal in the other, and then when he redissolved them, he found out that those two molecules were different. The molecules that crystallized were different. So basically, it came from the, on a quart of wine bottles, you get these crystals, and those crystals are tartaric acid, which are enantiomers of each other. And those crystals are, have a handedness. You have a right-hand crystal and a left-hand crystal. You have an R crystal and an S crystal. All right, with that, we are done. We're going to talk about compounds with multiple chiral centers on Monday. So I will see you then. Let's see if I can get this thing to stop on the first or fifth try.